Back in 1796, a British diplomat based in Italy, Sir William Hamilton, had gathered a collection of priceless artefacts for the British Museum. The only problem was how to get them home. So Hamilton's friend, Admiral Horatio Nelson, offered to give them a lift on one of his warships. So the priceless vases were loaded onto the 170-foot, 1,700-ton ship of the line, HMS Colossus. The Colossus was a powerful 74-gun Royal Navy warship. On her way home in 1798, she tried to take shelter from a fierce storm just off the Isles of Scilly. But her anchor line snapped and she was driven into dangerously shallow waters where she sank. In the 1970s, the front section of the Colossus was found and divers recovered ancient Greek pottery fragments. The British Museum restored a handful of the priceless ancient vases, dating from 440 BC. But they were only a small part of the treasure that was on board. Carpenter Todd Stevens is a scuba diver who spent years searching the area for shipwrecks. And in 1999, he made an extraordinary new discovery. More than half a kilometre away from the known Colossus site, Todd discovered a whole new section of the ship with artefacts everywhere. It just looked like a, a piece of rotten old iron, and it's a, it was the sort of thing I would have sometimes would have looked at and gone, rubbish. <laughs> After careful restoration, this object was revealed to be an 18th century flintlock pistol. Flintlock pistols were the workhorse of the Royal Navy and saw action for over 200 years, a vital weapon in the bloody action of boarding enemy ships. Pretty much everybody went over the side with their cutlasses and their muskets and pikes and, and pistols. The officers quite often had two, and as they went over the side, they would disperse them first, and then they would spin them over like this and use as a club <laughs> and actually if you hold that and feel the weight of that end that is terrifying to think that you're on this massive wooden ship and you're that close to someone that you have to club them to death yeah mm. it was pretty nasty stuff i'm going to take a dive to see where todd found the pistol and discover what other treasures the wreck still contains we're going to dive the um, stern section, which is here, we shall go up and go along the, the guns that are standing up off the seabed. They're still in situ exactly where they landed when the ship first went down. Exactly. So this hasn't been touched. I can't wait to get down there and actually see it for myself. The wreck of the Colossus is at a depth of 15 metres, just off the island of Samson. This thing's sticking up in front of me. I think that's a cannon. Wow, look at that. Todd, that is cool. Wow, look at this. You can actually see it's like a ship laid flat onto the seabed. It's incredible to think that this timber is over 200 years old and she survived just in 15 metres of seawater. <sighs> so normally on a site like this, one cannon itself would be amazing and, and quite a cool find. <sighs> but I look three metres on and there's another cannon. <sighs> also sunk into the seabed, nose down. <sighs> The evidence at the wreck site helps us build up a picture of what happened to the Colossus in that fateful storm. The wind and waves pushed the mighty ship onto the rocks. She rolled onto her side, lost her masts, and the enormous hull was torn apart. The front bow section sank almost half a mile away from the rear stern section. Over the years, the superstructure has been broken down, leaving this slice of her stern, port side down, that we can still see today. The timbers and the pins that held her together are still clearly visible. 
see are some serious spikes. <laughs> Look at them just lying on the bottom. These deadly looking pins are a meter of solid copper. Thousands of them formed the skeleton that held Colossus's mighty frame together. The wreck of the Colossus is still being carefully excavated and it continues to offer new discoveries. Is that a musket? That's the trigger. <laughs> After 200 years submerged, this is an amazing find. Muskets like this would have been used with our pistol in the desperate fights to board enemy ships. So this is the concretion, this is the seabed, sort of congealing together with the metal. So it's incredibly thick, but you know that the actual musket and the barrel are inside. And there's another one here. Wow. It's such a, a relatively small artifact, but to find it on the seabed exactly where it fell in 1798, in the middle of a winter storm. It's artifacts like this that really bring this site to life, that really evoke a sense of what those sailors had to suffer. It's a good job they got to Samson. Otherwise, they'd be lying down here with the musket as well. That was an awesome dive. It takes you a minute just to get your eye in. But once you start to see the detail, it's like the plan of a beautiful wooden 18th century ship just laid out on the seabed. This is what you go diving for. Something like that is... Um... There's nothing better in my book. Just touching it, when you know the story behind a wreck like that, to touch that history is just something else. The Colossus site is a protected wreck. You need a license to dive it. And now, it's illegal to remove any artifacts. It's incredible to think that a ship the size of HMS Colossus, from the time of Napoleon and Nelson, lay there for over 200 years undiscovered. It reminds me that Britain is awash with treasures and the treasures under the sea are the most secret of all. <laughs> <laughs>